Hello, my name is Jesus Manuel Antunes Dominguez, and welcome to another edition of Elbeflow webinars, where we make an introduction of a subject of interest in the field of microfluidics. Today, I will be talking about soil on chip systems. But first, let me start with a little introduction about myself. Uh, I, I come from Spain, where I studied a double degree in physics and material engineering in the University of Sevilla. There, I did as my final thesis. Uh, I engaged with the project uh, dealing with physical chemistry and chemical engineering, and that was my first contact with the with the path I would choose for my future research career. Then I got the chance to do a traineeship in the Joint Research Center of the European Commission in Gill, Belgium, where I carried out a study for the validation of a method for part nanoparticle characterization. And then I've just recently started here my PhD in the project of active matter. About me, well, my hobbies are cooking, dancing, and jogging. I even get to participate and compete sometimes in races, but that's a little bit in the past. Okay, the most important things to know about uh, the soil structure is that it's characterized by its heterogeneity. This heterogeneity exists at, exists at different levels and in different categories. So in the physical level, we have that the soil, uh, it's uh, uh, irregular and an intricate uh, system configuration of uh, different macroaggregates and pores. Uh, these macroaggregates are binded together through uh, organic matter, uh, plants, roots, or even to a lesser extent, uh, to the uh, uh, thanks to the uh, fungal ether. And also, here we have the fact that these macroaggregates are at the same time made of microaggregates. These microaggregates are made of uh, different clay particles and different, um, yeah, of course, uh, particles of organic matter. And it's where most of the micro, microorganisms in the soil live. Then from a chemical point of view, we have that these uh, components, these elements, of course, don't share the same composition. But at the same time, it's important to point out that uh, through all the volume considered, we are going to have different levels of resources that are going to be important for the for the microorganism living in the in the soil, that is, for example, different levels of water, nitrogen, CO2, or oxygen. Then we have that the soil is a biologically diverse uh, environment, having different lots of species of bacteria, fungi, uh, of course, different organisms such as nematodes, and more uh, complex structures such as the roots of the plants and, of course, the fungal ether. But the main point of this uh, uh, and the main interest of these solar chip systems is going systems is going to be studying their interactions. Uh, these interactions cannot be studied uh, from direct method uh, from a direct approach, given that uh, this pre sample preparation usually uh, takes away the natural behavior and the and the original properties of the soil system. So that is why uh, the development of soil on chip systems goal is to recreate all of these conditions to better study the interactions between the different parts of the soil. So a soil on chip system is a microfluidic platform used to study the interactions between soil dwelling organisms and their environment. Uh, the advantages of soil on chip systems uh, start with the general advantages of microfluidics. Uh, so for example, we have the transparency that can be used for uh, microscopy, also the fact that the laminar is flow, so you have a better control on the substances and that are in the chip, and uh, at the same time that you get a reduced quantity of the reagents needed for a, for a specific setup. But in the case of soil chip systems, we have another advantages that are more specific and that are uh, related to the heterogeneity I discussed before. So, for example, in microfluidic chips, we have a great control in the in the shape and the topography of the chips. So we can uh, very accurately recreate this uh, physical heterogeneity of the of the soil. Also, we can create different chemical gradients. This can be done, for example, through the control release devices or even through different uh, channels with different flows that we can control. We can also manipulate the microbial interactions of the different populations that are living in our chips. This can be done, for example, through the use of membranes that allow the, the products of each other to be in touch without the actual populations being in contact. But this can be uh, gradually also managed by letting some kind of uh, contact through different 
size of channels. And uh, we can uh, advance in the culturing of new species, given that we have most of the uh, conditions that I stated before, given that we have the, uh, uh, the heterogeneity in the physical of the topography, also in the, the different gradients and the different interactions, that is the main part, uh, we are able to mimic the real conditions that need these uh, soil organisms uh, to, to flourish and to develop. That, for example, in the case of, of soil microorganisms, most of the bacteria, we are not still to this day uh, able to um, uh, culture them in a, in a lab environment. Also, the, the microfluidics uh, systems are especially useful if we want to study the interactions uh, between the different microorganisms in the soils and the different uh, parts of the, of the soil with the roots and the uh, fungal ife, given that we can control the, its uh, morphology, nutrient supply, yeah, and exposure to different species. So then I'm going to explain some uh, applications that are the most interesting in the case of soil and chip systems. We have first the co-cultivation. The co-cultivation is the culture of more than one species of cell at the same time together. Uh, this is uh, related to the fact that they need uh, some kind of interaction. So this, as I stated before, is uh, really useful in order to be able to culture new types and new species of, of cells and micro, microorganisms from the soil that are, we cannot investigate right now and that can lead to the development of new antibiotics or new products. That's, for example, as we can see in the picture, only the, the, when in the environment they are present both types of cell, we can actually uh, obtain a well-developed population of both of them. Then this also means that we will gradually get more close to actually um, mimic the whole soil uh, environment. That means that we can also add uh, the interactions of many, of many different species and not only uh, two, time, two, two different species together. And it's worth mentioning here the use of droplet-based based microfluidics uh, to simplify the, the cultivation and screening and sorting uh, because in one droplet we can actually put all the, let's say, all the ingredients we need and then uh, and more easily sort them out to see which one are the interesting one and which are the, the, the actual uh, components that were needed to arrive to a certain situation. Then the next application is biofilms. Uh, biofilms are uh, the community, are a communities that of microorganisms that are embedded together in a polymeric matrix produced by themselves under the favorable conditions. This means that uh, they have uh, certain advantages, but most of all, as opposed uh, to, uh, to free swimming cells, they are going to have a totally different uh, behavior. And this can mean that they also have a different, uh, metabolic, uh, different metabolic paths. They are going to need different resources and they are going to produce different products. This also it's, uh, uh, helps the, the viability of different cultures as this uh, biofilm uh, environment that it's, that it's produced in the soil uh, can also uh, uh, better improve their survival rates and the ability to defend themselves or adapt to, to different environments. For example, it's also worth noting that we can actually put different types and, of microorganisms in the same biofilm so that they complement each other. And for example, uh, using aerobic and anaerobic microorganism in the same biofilm might improve its chance of survival in, a, in an environment where the oxygen levels are, are changing or are variable. Also, it's, uh, from the point of view of active matter, it's worth noting that there is also the possibility of some uh, collective movement of these uh, biofilms in the form of elongated particles called active nematics. Uh, the main advantage of this is that they allow the transport of the movement of these organisms in a much larger scale than they can individually. And then uh, the next, the last application is bioremediation. Uh, bioremediation is the processing of different pollutants and, and contaminated, uh, in this case, soils uh, through the use of microorganisms who can metabolize uh, these toxic uh, substances and reduce the, the environmental impact. 
in this case, we have that this is a much more uh, environmentally friendly also approach to deal with this kind of situation of contamination, given that you don't use our chemical neutralization and you don't need to, to make a proper elimination of, the, of that part of the soil. So we have that many uh, bacterial communities and even fungi are proved to be able to metabolize some, some uh, important and dangerous uh, uh, components such as, for example, organic solvents, uh, pesticides, uh, even oil, or in the most extreme cases, even, um, even heavy metals. As we can see in the table, we have some examples of some organisms that can deal with some pollutants and with different efficiency. So here we have, again, the importance of the interactions between different, uh, different populations because some of them might complement each other in order to achieve a better efficiency. So the thing uh, with the bioremediation is that it's difficult to study because uh, in natural conditions, there's a low abundance of the actual organism that is needed or it's, uh, the resources it's need to actually deal and metabolize the, the pollutant are not available. Or maybe it cannot even be, it cannot access the pollutant to, to metabolize it. So that is why uh, microfluidics it's a great solution to actually find a more specific solution for its case to tune in the different conditions and find the best solution to achieve the, the best efficiency in in a case of, of contamination then i will explain some of the most interesting uh, approaches microfluidic approaches in order to achieve these uh, soil conditions that are needed in the first uh, case we have that to achieve the chemical heterogeneity uh, we can create some uh, chemical gradient generators. This is usually done through the flow of different channels until they are prog progressively mixed uh, in different levels. This can also be applied to different uh, organisms. So we have uh, different proportions of the of populations to achieve the, the biological heterogeneity. Another, another interesting option is the cell traps that are designed through the control of flow to actually achieve a trap uh, uh, in a single manner, each one, the cells of interest. In this case, we can actually uh, have a lot of control on the, on the biological diversity of our sample. Then, as I explained before, we have also the droplet-based microfluidics that are specifically, are specifically interesting in the sense of analyzing the interactions between the different components of the soil. And finally, the microstructured uh, regions that can be done uh, through, the, through the available techniques for the, for the chips in microfluidics. That is, uh, for example, soft lithography or PDMS casting. And we can actually get to very intricate and complicated topographies, such as that of, the, of a two-dimensional slice of solid phase. Okay, so well, these are the references that I've used for this presentation. Uh, I highlighted two of them that I think are worth checking out if you're interested in the subject. And I hope you find it interesting. Uh, if don't hesitate, if you have any kind of doubt or question to ask them in the comments, we will gladly uh, answer them. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye. <laughs>